Hey Truth Seekers, this is Carolyn here with my Sophia Mono Love deck. So I chose to run Sophia over Yana simply because I wanted the extra draw power in this deck when facing a Sunny, which was extremely helpful when we were playtesting this. So in this deck, I run seven love power cards. And I want to be able to see those, but I also have a lot of um, drawing my power cards in this particular build. So that is something that I wanted to keep. So that is our setup here. Let me get this. Sorry about that. So starting off, I run two Akindleo. I, I did have three in this particular build, but I needed to put some extra things in there, some uh, equipment cards and such. So I went ahead and just stuck with two. But this one has the ability that as long as it's in my small group, my opponent cannot reveal any Mega Sinis, which is extremely helpful since love is very typically um, not as necessarily as powerful virtue point wise. Um, so Facing those megas is pretty is pretty rough. So. And also, because I know I'm going to be facing a lot of sinnies, Poparaze is in this deck. And super helpful when it comes to... There we go. Super helpful when it comes to working with those sinnies. I run two Nebe because power cards are definitely needed. Um, I ran a couple games with this that I just didn't see the power cards I needed and it really stunk. So having that uh, ability to get those power cards is really helpful. And in similar fashion, I run one Quillow. Um, again, for that um, power card search because one for four isn't the greatest, um, being a level two especially, but being able to get those power cards is makes it worth it. I run two Flamingo level one and two Flamingo level two. So that helps me get those power cards again. Um, but this helps me do it when it is grown. So that's really helpful, especially if I want to throw a um, pulse chains on there, grab some other animo, or I can simply use it as a two for eight, which is pretty good value. I have two Heartvark level 1 and two Heartvark level 2. Um, again, since I'm doing a mono love deck, fellowship bonuses aren't really that great, um, simply because there's really not any. And so I'm not using it as a 2 for 10, I'm simply using it as a 2 for 7, but I get to go search for some animo to set up my next turn. So since this deck does not have a lot of draw or search power, that is extremely helpful and can potentially win you the game. Now, the couple fellowship bonuses we do have in here are our lovely Fairly, um, getting us a two for eight as long as you play it in the same turn with something else. Next, I have, oops, sorry, I have three Saltini level one and three Saltini level two. So being able to bounce a Cine back to the hand of my opponent is wonderful. Um, and ca has when has won me the game when I've been practicing with this deck. So going full in on Saltini was the right move. I have two Agape Soar level one and two Agape Soar level two. So again, this is kind of a Cine defeating deck. Um, the other day when we were playing it, I was able to defeat Nathaniel simply by quoting my verses. And this helped me with it because I left Agape Sword level 2 out there. And the next turn he played something else on me. And I went ahead and threw my Agape Sword level 1 out there. And simply because it states that it has a weakness of Agape Sword, it doesn't matter if it's a level 1 or level 2. So I was able to say the verse on the level 1 and defeat another one of his sinnies with this card. So super helpful. Um, beginning my ultras, I have a single flow ultra. This is a great utility card as it allows me to go search for any three anima, which could be a Cine if I wanted it to be as well. So Flow is great utility. And then I have two Agave Sword Ultras. I was running a Treshell Ultra in this deck, but for this extra point, um, it just made sense to go ahead and run two Agave Sword Ultras. Uh, I don't run any Megas, so... 
Moving on to my story cards, I have two rich fools that draw me the bottom three cards of my deck. Because again, none of my animo really draw me cards. They might get me some power cards and some animo, but they're not drawing me anything, which is kind of frustrating. I have two hidden treasures, again for the same reason, but also this helps me if I have a growth stage that I can't quite use yet. Um, it, puts, it puts that back into my deck, so I'm not having to discard it. I have two fishing nets, again, just simple draw power. I have full investment on the runaway, um, because being able to go search for an animal in my discard pile is super helpful. Uh, when you have a smaller level one, you know, earlier on in the game, and you have the ability to play it. Sometimes you don't want to wait for that level two, or this also allows me to go get my flow ultra. And that is definitely needed when setting up certain big plays. Next, we have a singular sand castle that allows me to go search for an ultra. Typically, I'll go use this for my flow, but if I've already played my flow, then I will go grab my agape sword ultra and just play it for points. Moving on to equipment, I have two tools of the trade. So this allows me to get extra points um, just in general, but also if I'm facing a Cine, it gets even more extra points. So adding those extra points on there really makes some of these cards worth it. Um, that's really great on, say, like Quillo level two, you know, makes it a lot bigger. Um, going on to my Cinnies, I have Splidapidator. When this card is revealed, your opponent must shuffle half the Animo from their small group back into their deck, rounding up. So he's not very big, but he is very, um, <laughs> really nasty to play against, but it's fun to play him. I have Walrus. So Walrus is a unique Cine in the fact that you can have up to three copies in your deck and play them on top of each other to create a wall, which has a defense of the sum of each card. Each Walrus card in the wall counts as one Cine when defeated. So if you do go ahead and put all of these out there, it's going to take them a while to defeat it, but it is going to count as three sinnies when defeated. So just keep that in mind with how many sinnies your opponent has defeated if you do decide to go play that. I have a hookworm because adding that extra cost onto my opponent has been shown to win games. Uh, I have an anxiator. Um, your opponent may not play any story or equipment cards on their next turn, which helps keep um, things like pulse chains out of there. Um, or the runaway or things like that if your opponent has a flow ultra in their deck. I have a waspitz. When the sinny is revealed, select one card from your opponent's discard pile and set it to the side and it cannot return for the duration of the game. Really fun to play on your opponent when they've already played something, say like a stagnetic or their flow ultra. It's really kind of funny to go get rid of it and they don't like it very much. It's especially fun to use against Nathaniel. Uh, Fear Crow. So choose a level 1, 2, or 3 animo from your opponent's small group. Reveal that animo, um, or sorry, revert that animo back to level 1 by having your opponent shuffle the growth stages back into their deck. Definitely strikes fear into the hearts of an opponent. I have Wolf in this deck simply because being able to draw into Sinis is great, but at the same time, if I have more than one Sinny in my hand, it's really helpful to go just draw another card instead. And then finally, my pseudo mega for the deck is Grumble. And he is one of the biggest animo out there that is not a mega. So since I'm running my ultras, I have no room for megas. And so this one kind of works in um, conjunction with that. So that is my Sophia mono love deck. So... Have fun with that, guys, and keep learning virtues and defeating sinnies.